Okay guys, I don't know if you are ready for this unboxing. I don't know if I'm ready for this unboxing, but here we go. I get contacted daily from different sellers and companies that want me to review their products. Usually it's something like an air fryer or a pressure cooker or other various kitchen equipment. And I turn down over 99% of those requests because there's only so many air fryers I can review. But when I got contacted by the company Molto to review their new cooking pal, I had to take a second look and I had to say yes. This product is unlike anything I've seen on the market. According to the description, it does nearly everything. And I don't know, maybe this is the future of cooking, you guys. We're getting in on the ground floor. So instead of trying to describe it all for you, I'm gonna go ahead and open the box because I don't think I fully understand it yet either. So first off, they sent me this handy dandy apron. So I better put that on. All right guys, let's get to this. So in the box, they have instructions on the top for opening the box. Pretty fancy stuff here. So it's supposed to go up on its side and then we can slide it out. Next step is to open the front flap. Ooh, look at that. Next is remove the accessories box. This has the steamer set and the spatula. The lid to the steamer, the steamer basket, and the special spatula. Next box here has, oh my goodness. Look at this. This is the dedicated tablet that connects to the cooker. All the paperwork here, connected cooking with Molto, user manual, safety guide, and warranty. I will be reading these for sure because this is a very new piece of equipment to me. Can't just wing it on something like this. Power cord. Another cord that I imagine goes to the uh, tablet and the stand for the tablet. Because when you're cooking, you don't want to have to be holding a tablet. It has to have a stand. All right, and now for the biggest part of this thing. The, what do they call it? Oh, they just call it the Molto. C pull out the Molto. <sighs> Woohoo, look at that. Oh my goodness, it's enormous. So there is a view of everything that is in the box. Now to figure out how to get it started. This just pulls off of here. So that's like the big cooking base, like the soup pot and it does all kinds of things. So not just the soup pot. Oh, more stuff inside here, of course. Some kind of a paddle that we will find out about later a small steamer basket and then look down inside here it's almost like a blender or a food processor in there so food will get processed and chopped blended chopped whatever you want pureed and it can cook in the same container the base here is pretty simple since you're going to be controlling it with the tablet it doesn't have a lot of controls there's just the one button on the front and then on the back here, it has a on off switch, a USB port, and then a power cord port. I'll go ahead and plug that in. Just to give you a quick overview of all the different things that this machine does, on here it says it cooks, it weighs, so it has a scale in there so you don't have to weigh things separately or measure things separately. It boils, it mixes, steams, kneads, so you can do like bread dough in there, whisks, grinds, emulsifies, chops, grates, and sautés. Another feature that it has is a self-cleaning feature. So I am gonna look into that real quick. Clean mode features two cleaning modes, quick clean, quick and easy bowl refreshment in between two cooking steps, Deep clean, removing tough or dried up food residue. I think I'll go ahead and do the deep clean to get it just all the way clean for before we start cooking. First thing is plug it in and turn on 
the switch back here. Ooh, it's working. This is called the hub, by the way. You plug the hub in, oh, right here, right on the side, there's a little port that you plug one end of the cord into and the other end goes into the back of the Molto in the USB port. I'm gonna take off the protective film here. To turn it on, I'm just gonna press and hold the power button that's on the back right there. There it is. We're doing something right. Real quick, I'm connecting to the Wi-Fi. Connection successful. All right, now I have to connect the hub to the Molto machine. So let's see how we're supposed to do that. Press and hold the control button until the blue light blinks. There we go. And then hit the next button. It's found, yay. Connect. Yay, we did it. All right, I'm gonna watch the safety video instructions. Well, that was very informative. So one cool thing that they offer is a whole catalog of recipes that are already programmed in here. And you could just click on a recipe and then follow the instructions and press the buttons and the machine will do what it's supposed to do for the recipe. But if you're not using a recipe, I think you use the cooking modes because you can do it manually as well. But it's kind of cool that they have the recipes all programmed in there. So all you have to do is follow the instructions and press the button every time you finish a step and um, it cooks your meal. So here are the guided recipes so you can See, there's main dishes, sauces, side dishes, soups, smoothies, drinks, shakes, all kinds of stuff you can scroll through. But I wanna go to the cooking mode. So there's the knead mode, steam mode, saute, scale, keep warm, manual, and clean. Let's try clean real quick. Quick wash, deep clean, three minutes. All right, I'm going to fill up the base, is that a good name for it? The base with water and soap, and then we will try the deep clean program. Have to take off the lid in order to take it off the base. That must be a safety feature. And oh, oh, lid goes this way, lid on and start. Hey you, what's up? I just want to see the cookie robot. Yeah, what do you think? Um, it doesn't have a face, sadly. Although their logo is a face. It's the cooking pal, see? Oh. It's got a little happy face. Oh. Wait, how does it clean for you? you well, it's cleaning inside here. It's got soap and water in here, and it's like heating it up, and then it'll like mix it up in order to clean the inside of the pot. What? Crazy, I won't huh? have to wash the dishes anymore. We won't even need the dishwasher. Well, it won't clean the other dishes. It just cleans itself. Oh. <laughs> Wait, it's yeah. kind of like it's its own dishwasher. Well... Actually, we think we need. I uh, actually, I think we still need the dishwasher because it can only do one at a time, and that That's can true. do like well, we'll thousands. Use, we will use other dishes besides just this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, it's deep cleaning now. Apparently, this will go for three minutes. Sounded like it was gonna take off there for a second. It's really working. Good tidbit here, all the accessories are dishwasher safe. Just place, just place the plastic parts in particular, in, uh, in, and in particular the mixing lid onto the top rack of the dishwasher. And I 
guess that means it's done. Now I just need to rinse it out. I just want to kind of play around with this and see what these look like. So this is the manual setting. Oh, so you can select the temperature you want it to cook at, the duration. Just time. Speed. Speed of what? Maybe the speed of like this, the stirring at the bottom. So it'll stir while it cooks. Oh, and you can change the direction of the of the blades. Let's see. Keep warm mode. That's probably pretty simple. Ooh, the scale mode. Oh, tap to reset the scale to zero. Oh. When I press down on it, see, it tells me how many ounces. I wonder if you can change it from ounces to something else. I discovered the settings where you can go to preferences and you can change the weight to grams. You can also change to Celsius or Fahrenheit. I usually use grams when I'm weighing food for cooking, but I cook in Fahrenheit. So I like that you can toggle one or the other. All right, saute. Be careful as the bowl is hot. Do not touch with bare hands, okay. Temperature 265 for saute. Timer set to seven minutes, but you can adjust. Um, all right, so I guess we still need the lid on even with saute because they're gonna stir it for us. We don't have to stand here and stir it. And it shows you the current temperature right here. That's cool. So it doesn't just stir the whole time, it sounds like. It sounds like it stirs a little bit and then stops. Okay, steam, 20 minutes. So like this is a, the steaming basket, but then there's also the big steaming tray. Knead. Oh, the butterfly whisk can be used for kneading. That is this butterfly whisk. Now I am going to peruse the guided recipes and see what I have on hand that I could cook real quick. Probably be something simple. Oh, you can make almond flour in here. Chicken stock, oh, that's interesting. Let me see. Ingredients, all these things, steps and notes. All right, so step one, see all of your ingredients. Step two, blanch the chicken. Step three, prepare the vegetables, add the ingredients, strain the stock, ready to serve. Banana strawberry ice cream. Banana tiramisu, desserts look good, baked treats, oh, breads, because you can do kneading in here, peanut butter and jelly protein smoothie bowl. What, what is, does it do? <laughs> what doesn't it do? That is the question. So it blends like a blender. Yes. Food processes like a food processor, cooks while it does those things, steams with the steamer basket, it can like knead dough, like bread dough. Then what's this? This is the tablet that controls it. Oh. Isn't that crazy? I wanna, can we try it? Yeah, I'm gonna make this soup. So I went through the recipes and there were a lot of really complex recipes like gourmet and I didn't have the ingredients for a lot of them, but there were things in there like making your own almond milk, making your own peanut butter, they had an almond sour cream recipe that's like a dairy-free sour cream. So there were a few simple recipes, but nothing that I could find that I had all the ingredients for currently, except for this soup. I have most of the ingredients for the ginger chicken. I think it was gin ginger chicken soup. So I'm gonna try that. I will say that this is not a keto app. Almost all of the uh, recipes have grains. It's just standard, standard gourmet food. But the cool thing about it is that they add new recipes all the time. So you can check back and get new recipes programmed in here. And hey, it would be really cool if they put different, you know, diet or lifestyle choices in there like keto or paleo or different things like that. That would be really awesome. And they totally have the ability to do that since they are able to upgrade and add information all the time but then you don't even have to use the recipes in there because you can do everything manually as well. So this is the recipe that I picked, ginger chicken soup. You can see the ingredients here. 
and you can um, go over to the steps so you can kind of look ahead and see what the steps are. Oh, and you can even hit show detail and it shows you all the steps. The only thing I am going to change is I am going to use uh, coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. And then I don't have a whole lemon, unfortunately, but I have a little bit of lemon juice. Not a lot, just a little bit. So hopefully that will be enough. I'm gonna pull out all of my ingredients because I'm gonna hit, let's start. Oh, I have it on four servings, but I could always, you know, up it. And that changes the amounts here, but I'm gonna keep it on four servings. I don't think I need to do more than that. I'm gonna hit, let's start. And then we're at step one here. Um, take out your ingredients and then see all of your ingredients. Oh, there they are. See all of your ingredients. Oh, this is a picture of all of our ingredients, but I need the list of it. Where is the, no, nope. I can, I can take a photo. I can add suggestions and save that, but I want to see the list of ingredients. No, that shows me all the steps. I mean, I guess I have to go back out here to see all the ingredients. That's weird, but I can just get them from this list. Here are all of my ingredients. Hitting let's start. Take out your ingredients. I have already done that. Peel the garlic and ginger with the back of a spoon. Slice the jalapeno in half and take out the seeds, but you don't have to chop it. You don't have to chop these. You just peel them. All right. So I sliced that one in half, got those peeled. Now I am going to slice the green part of the green onions into thin rounds, and those are for serving for later, but I assume that the white parts, uh, the white and the light green parts of the green onion, put them in the uh, mixing bowl. I think I'm ready to put some food in the pot. So green onions, jalapeno. I just did two cloves of garlic instead of three because these were really big, and then a piece of ginger and start. Are they going to make me put on the lid to start it? Lid is open. Must put on the lid and start. Ah! Ooh, that was it. it. Smells good. I'll tell you that. Okay. Look at there. That is chopped. There's still some big chunks of uh, ginger in there, but maybe that'll cook down. Use spatula to scrape down sides of the mixing bowl. Okay, put this on again and gonna hit start. Okay, it says done. I don't know if I'm supposed to hit, go to the next, if I'm not supposed to be doing this over and over again, if I'm supposed to go to the next um, thing or hit start. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next step. I'm not sure about this. Can you see, I can just hit start and it just does that 10 second thing again and blends it up more. But then there's also this arrow to go on to the next step. Okay, so maybe I was only supposed to do that once. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, because you go on to the next step and then you hit start when you get ready for the next step to do its thing. We'll get this figured out, guys. All right, I'm gonna add the oil to the mixing bowl. Remove measuring cup. Remove the measuring cup. So, like the measuring cup that you added the oil with? Because there's no measuring cup in there. And saute. Okay, we'll try this. I feel like they should tell me the measurement because I'm not going to just remember it. Oh, what? no. My suggestion is let me know how much I'm supposed to be putting in because I feel like I have to. Oh, there it is. There it is. Three tablespoons. Ha! Ah, look at that. It tells me up there. Three tablespoons. So three tablespoons of oil is about an ounce and a half. So I'm going to hit the scale button and it's teared at zero ounces and I'm going to add this oil until I get to one and a half ounces. Oh, so close. Oh, there we go. Oop, oh, almost. There we go. There we go. And start. Oh, I gotta put it on the lid. <laughs> Cooking for one minute. 
done cooking. Um, so I don't want to hit start again because that'll just do the one minute cooking time again. Like I just learned. Now we're going to go to add the broth using the scale. How handy. Attach the steamer to the mixing bowl. Place the chicken in a single layer on shallow steaming tray. Close the lid and cook. The, add the broth to the mixing bowl using the scale. So close, come on. There we go, 48. I'm excited that we're gonna be able to see how the steaming tray works. So it has three pieces, the lid, and then the shallow steaming tray, and then the deeper steaming tray. So you can see that the bottom of this looks like the lid. So this attaches as the lid when you're using the steaming tray. So I'm gonna put it on. We're gonna get this. Did I do it wrong? Okay, hold on. There we go. There we go. And then I'm putting the shallow steaming rack in there and layering my chicken thighs on there. It's a good thing I didn't do like a lot more servings because I wonder if you'd have to do separate batches of chicken. You could fit a little more on there, but not a lot. So now I'm closing the lid on that and I'm hitting start. And that is gonna cook for 30 minutes. Next, oh, transfer cooked chicken thighs to a plate and shred into bite-sized chunks with two forks. There's my cooked chicken thighs. The shredding is done, so I'm gonna go to what I think is the last step. Finish soup. Um, cut the lemon in half and squeeze. Add the lemon juice, salt, pepper, and soy sauce to the mixing bowl. So adding a half of a teaspoon of black pepper, a half of a teaspoon of salt, and then half of a teaspoon of coconut aminos. And I'm just gonna add all the rest of the lemon juice that I have. And it looks like I need to blend the soup again. Start. All right, and then add more salt or soy sauce to taste. Says it's done, which means I think I can open the lid now. There's my soup. So adding about a quarter of the chicken to the bowl. Some green onion some cilantro, and we'll do another sprinkle of black pepper like it says. There we go. And there's some ginger chicken soup. Gonna give this a try. It's good. It's got a lot of flavor because of the ginger. The jalapeno gives it a little bit of a kick, but not a ton. It's not too spicy. It's very good. So obviously this thing is gonna have a really steep learning curve because it's so different from any other appliance. And it does so many different things. I feel like I only gave you a tiny taste of what it can do. I'll be playing with it some more. It's a fun toy. So you can look forward to some more videos of exploring the different features and trying to use it to make my own recipes because I'm not one that typically follows a lot of recipes. I like to throw things together and I'm interested to see if that will work out conveniently uh, with this machine. I will put all the info about where you can find this appliance down in the description below, as well as a coupon code if you are in the market for something like this. Uh, you can get a little bit of a discount. And I know some of you are probably laughing saying, 
who would ever buy such a thing? This is crazy, but here's my take on it. Several years ago, I got the opportunity to review a pressure cooker that was a talking pressure cooker. Instead of beeping at you, it would talk to you. And I thought that feature was silly, it was kind of a gimmick. I did the review, I showed all the features, and interestingly, I got a lot of comments from people in the blind community who let me know that that's exactly the kind of pressure cooker they were looking for. And that hadn't even crossed my mind, which I felt bad about. So learning from that experience, I try really hard to not assume that everyone is in the same position as I am in regards to their cooking appliance needs. And I am just excited to be able to feature something different and have fun showing you something very unique. And if it turns out to be the right kitchen appliance for some of you, that's great. If not, we've had a lot of fun in the process. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing, first impressions, and test run video. Let me know if there's any features on here that you're dying to see and to find out how they work. I would love to try to do a video to show you guys. I hope you all are doing great and I will see you again in another video.